Hey guys, Mike Burke here with InsideRealEstatePhotography.com and just this week Photoshop released its new version, Photoshop 2021, and included with it is a brand new sky replacement feature which is right up our alley as real estate photographers. So in this video we're going to dive in and take a look. So if you've seen my previous sky replacement video, then you'll know I usually use Luminar 4 to do sky swaps. And Luminar 4 does a great job of it. It's very easy and straightforward to use. If you haven't seen that video, I'll link to it up on the screen right now. But Photoshop 2021 just came out this week and it includes a sky replacement feature in it. And we're gonna see how that performs. And also I'll comment on how it compares to Luminar 4. All right, so without further ado, let's dive in and take a look. All right guys, so here we are in Photoshop. I have this image that I shot yesterday. It was a gray crappy day, so obviously this it will need a sky swap. Sorry, it's not more spectacular. It's not very cleaned up or whatever, but it will serve its purpose for this demonstration to see how Photoshop handles the sky swaps with this new feature. So to find the new feature, you would just go to the edit menu and then you'll see sky replacement. So we'll select that and you'll see this new sky replacement dialog box that pops up it's already inserting a sky into our image. But if you click here, you'll see it comes with a bunch of skies that you can use, which is nice. And this is very similar to Luminar 4 where you can go through the skies and click on them and they will just put them right into the image. And you know, that's great. Uh, it's very straightforward. Here's spectacular. Let's put a rainbow in. Um, obviously we weren't gonna use any of these, but there are some sunset ones down here as well. So these would come in handy for twilights and things like that. Not for quite for this image, but so we want a blue sky here. We want some clouds in the sky because obviously there's no sun hitting the house, just no shadows being cast. So having no clouds in the image wouldn't be natural. So one of these would work, you know, theoretically the sun could be behind one of the clouds. So that's why we're not, you know, getting any shadows here or anything like, or the sun hitting the house, uh, et cetera. So we want this to be believable in some regard. Uh, one of these, maybe this one, that would work. I don't really like it as much. Um, we have this one, that's pretty good as well. I actually like this one. I think it, it goes pretty well with the vibe of this image. So I'm gonna choose that one. So now we have our adjustments here. So we have brightness, obviously that will brighten the sky up or bring the exposure down a little bit on it. This isn't a very bright image, so we might wanna take it down just a, not, a tad here. And I don't know, just a little bit maybe, that's good. Temperature, obviously. You know, we don't want to cool this down. It's cloudy, so it's a little bit warmer. So I'm gonna bring the warmth up maybe just a little bit. You know, this is just adjusting the taste here. We're just trying to composite this image and make it look as believable and natural as possible. So you can see the edge of the sky here. So it's not filling the entire area. So we want to scale this up a little bit by using the scale slider here. And you can see it's scaling up here now. A little bit more. And with the move tool here, you can move the sky around. Position it where you like. Just make sure that, you know, the edges are, it's filling your entire screen. Somewhere around there I like. So now it's filling the entire area. Actually, no, it's not. I gotta scale this up a little bit more. There we are. All right, so now we have this filling our entire area. Uh, we have made our brightness and temperature adjustments. Now flip, we'll just flip the sky horizontally. So what, how that would be come in handy is if, if we did have some sun coming through and we did have shadows, so say the sun was over here and casting shadows in this direction onto the ground, in our foreground, you know, you can see on the clouds here that you know, it's sort of highlighted here. This isn't so obvious as other cloud images might be, but you can see that the sun's probably coming from the top right corner here since it's hitting the clouds sort of over here. So naturally the shadows would be coming down onto the ground this way. But if we had shadows in this image and they were going the opposite direction, obviously that would not look right. So you would be able to flip the sky 
and change the direction so that the lighting direction matches your foreground image. So that's a nice thing to be able to do here. So that's what flip would do. Now we want to take a look at these edge uh, options here. So for instance, if we take a look at this tree, you know, we obviously have some bleed of the sky on this tree and shift edge will kind of deal with the edges. So if we bring this down, I'm, you can see the tree coming in much better now. So things like this where there's detail, I would just use shift edge to, to you know, get the edges right here. So it looks like these trees aren't getting just washed out or blued out by the sky. Um, so somewhere around there, it looks pretty good. You know, we don't have these kind of disappearing or looking blue anymore. So fade edge is sort of like a feather. Fade edge will, you'll see, bring the fade down a little bit. So it's less feathered in a way. Um, somewhere around there is looking nice. All right, so that's our shift edge and fade edge. It just, it's just manipulating the edge of the sky and how it's fading in and blending with our foreground image. So now we have our foreground adjustments. So let's take a look at that. So if we look at the preview here, you can see that the sky is overlaying onto the trees here and really dimming this down. And we don't want that even here over here. So if we use this lighting adjustment slider, that will affect how much it's dimming down these trees and other things in the foreground. So if we bring this down, you can see that's bringing more of the foreground back in. So yeah, brighten that up a lot. And color, again, would we'll just adjust the look of the foreground. You can adjust that as needed. Now here we have output. So you can choose to send this to new layers, which will include you know, the adjustments we made and be able to go back and adjust them again and tweak them again later, which is fantastic. And that's probably the biggest advantage of this new Photoshop sky replacement tool over Luminar. The fact that you can manipulate it afterwards um, after you know outputting it is fantastic. Um, or you can go to a flattened duplicate layer, but I like the fact that you can manipulate it again if you were doing more edits. So I will keep it on new layers. And I just wanna also address the brush tool here and you'll see up here you have plus and minus. So if you had any overlap, you'll see like, you know, on the gutters here, that's pretty common. Um, I'll get your my minus tool here. If it was missing in any, if the sky was missing in any areas, you could paint it in or like here, you'll see how it's overlapping here onto the house. You can get rid of it. So this is very similar to Luminar as well. And this is what I would use in Luminar to kind of brush out any sky that got onto my foreground area. So I would just take the Make sure you're on normal. Uh, the brush tool here and brush out any of the sky that's overlapping onto the house here or the gutter. Usually it's like white areas. So that removed that. All right, so once you're satisfied with everything, you would just hit OK and you'll see how now it bounces it out to own group here and you have these adjustments here that we made sky brightness sky temperature and you can just click here now and up here you'll notice that we have the ability to manipulate this again so that's fantastic and that's probably again the biggest feature of this Photoshop sky replacement tool so the other advantage here is that you know you can go into your mask option click on it and if you take a brush on overlay and you know, keep your flow down, make sure your foreground's on white. You can go in here and do some, you know, edge refinements, like along some of your edges. You could really, you know, refine some of this stuff, which is great. You know, there's just a greater level of control here over Luminar. This is, you know, a huge advantage over Luminar because you don't have this option in Luminar. So, you know, that's one big advantage. And also it's included with Photoshop. So you don't have to buy another piece of software you know, again, you could play around with this and, you know, make your edges more refined. 
you know, I'm just kind of showing you how this works here in Photoshop. You know, there's definitely some more refinements that could be made here to make this look a little bit better, obviously. But that in a nutshell is the new sky replacement feature in Photoshop. All right guys, so there's a new sky replacement tool, brand new to Photoshop 2021. It's really great that they put that in there, especially for us real estate photographers, we need to do sky replacements all of the time, so it's right up our alley. Again, it's very comparable to the Luminar 4. It does a similar quality job, but there is a greater level of control here in Photoshop, and it's great that it's included in Photoshop and you don't have to buy another piece of software. All right guys, so if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I really appreciate your support. Also, if you're interested in any consulting services or being the first to find out about videos I have coming down the pipeline or a look behind the scenes, please check out the link down below. Also, if you're not already signed up for Photoshop and you're interested in signing up, I will also provide a link to that in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching this video and I'll see you again on the next one.